Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Monday, May 29th, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's start with a couple of games come out recently. Lots of you have reached out to ask me about these games. And also just so many awesome comments, especially that first night back video. Uh, guys, just again, just want to thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, doing my best to work through those. Explain that last night. We won't beat that to death. Gaming-wise, Farpoint, Bridge Commander, both games I'm aware of. Haven't been able to play anything because of a lack of a computer desk. First VR I should have set up, though, is PlayStation VR. So I'm hoping to get to Farpoint, um, at least in time for my gaming recap video, so I can actually throw in some personal experience on the game, which will be awesome. All right, let's start with a real-time strategy game. It's called Brass Tactics, and Mark Tirano, he is the game designer behind Age of Empires 2, which is a game to this day I still enjoy. Uh, not just because of the history thing, which I think is cool, but how it approached real-time strategy games. And still get a kick out of the villagers. I mean, of course, the orcs are cooler in Warcraft, but uh, Age of Empires, the whole playing with the different uh, races was just a hell of a lot of fun. And I got to the point where I was so good at the game, you know, you'd make up silly rules like don't let a villager die or X number die, etc. So... He's kind of the brains behind that. He's taken that experience now and is applying it to a virtual reality RTS game. The screenshots that I've seen, because we don't know a lot about the game yet, kind of have that populous view. And I know I'm going real far back with that game, but it was one of the first RTS style games called Populous. You were the god and they were literally your people. And you had that kind of God view, almost, you know, out of the Greek mythos, right? Where everything happens on a table and they're standing around the table. Well, Brass Tactics is kind of making it look that way. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, what their take on an RTS in VR is. I'm not a huge fan of just, you know, what you've always been used to, just applying that to VR. No, put some creativity behind it. You're on a new medium. We're going to touch on exactly that with one of the last news pieces today. So more on that later. But uh, yeah, check that out. Brass Tactics. Tirano gets an in, into an entire interview on the game, the development of the game. It's pretty interesting. No point in really going into it here. Just know that it's there. Click the link in the description below if you want to read more. All right, next news story. Samsung's new VR display, 3.5 times more pixels than Rift or Vive, which is kind of misleading because we talk all the time about Samsung. Talked about them the other day, and of course, I've mentioned this in the past, but it bears mentioning again. They are probably in the best position of any freaking company. I mean, you could argue Google is in a pretty decent position right now, but not as good as Samsung. Not only is Samsung playing everybody, they are literally providing the screens for everybody. We've talked about that. I mean, they can't lose in this. They are winning in every possible way. So a new screen, definitely welcome. I'm going to put up a couple of screenshots, guys. Uh, one of the reporters for the article was able to take shots through the HMD lens and it does a great job of illustrating the lack of a screen door effect because we're talking literally uh, 858 pixels per inch, which is twice the 460 of the Rifter Vive. Now, one thing the picture does a really good job of, so I urge you to go to the link and check them out rather than the ones that I'm posting. I'm just going to talk about them, use that as a reference, and then go check them out because it really shows you how diminished the screen door effect is. And I'm pretty confident with this or greater, it's going to be a thing of the past. Plus, just how much more visual real estate you get. There's so much more in the new Samsung screen. So really looking forward to that. We're talking about 2024 by 2200 pixels in a 3.5 inch form factor, which is... Absolutely amazing. 
same refresh rate, 90 hertz, just like I said, considerably more pixels per inch plus better resolution. Now, not to be outdone by the monopoly that is Google or uh, rather Samsung for VR screens, we've got Google and Sharp teaming up to create LCDs for VR as well. Now, Sharp, like Samsung, does make its own screens. They just don't have anywhere near the market share of Samsung at the moment. But they do have significant expertise in the area. So it's a good alliance. It makes a hell of a lot of sense. Sharp currently supplies LCDs for mobile phones, televisions, cars, etc. So it's a good alliance for Google from that point of view, given what their VR strategy is. Makes a lot of sense. All right, next news story. World Pay demos a system for making payments inside virtual worlds. Now, we're going to get into how they're doing this. And then with that comment I had at the start about just taking what you do in reality and applying it to VR, we'll touch on that again. So just a matter of time before companies, you know, started thinking about it this way. But World Pay is investigating exactly that, how to do payment transactions in VR. And their take is very much do what we do in real life and apply that to VR. So they have a uh, system, it's a prototype currently. The acronym is HCE, which stands for Host Card Emulation. And it's virtual representation technology, similar to what Android and those companies are using, except they're applying graphics to it. So you're gonna actually go through the exercise of swiping your card, tapping your card, and depending on the purchase value, if it's more than 30, for example, entering a PIN code and doing that all virtually. So why am I not a fan of that? And like I said, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Why do we have to recreate what we do in real life and apply it to VR? Can't we come up with something a bit more creative? This is VR after all. And the whole point of that is it's an escape. Sure, it can be a learning tool. It can be a lot of things. But for those of us who use it as an escape, a gaming tool, for example, I don't want to be reminded about real life bills and plastic and swiping and tapping things. No, do it outside for now. And when the technology gets better, make it something that is just different. Maybe it's controller based, uh, a wave of the arm a certain way or whatever. I mean, I'm not here to solve it. I'm just here to say, I don't like recreating what we do in real life necessarily. It doesn't always work. And in terms of payment schemes, I think for sure it doesn't work to just recreate that. Next news story, and this was sent to me by uh, Fuzzball B, one of the viewers, and apologies, Fuzzball, that I'm only getting to it now, uh, but I literally just got to it today. And he basically gave me a link to Engadget, which dealt with the Google Surat. And this is an absolutely amazing tool. Right now, Lucas Industrial, you know, Light and Magic is using it for their renders. And what the tool does is it takes complicated renders, whether they're done on a 3D application, uh, whether they're done, you know, movie-wise, like I said, with uh, Industrial Light and Magic, for example. And then it converts that and it seems to be a type of compression but it's able to recreate that for display in say a mobile in real time. We're talking just a few milliseconds to render. So very powerful tool uh, named after the French painter Surat. And yeah, basically it can take complex 3D scenes and then break them down so that they can be rendered on phones. Now at Google's two day uh, event, this was revealed. There's not a lot of work or rather a lot of knowledge on exactly how it does it. That's kind of kept under wraps, proprietary. But what we can say is it's been used and those who've used it confirm it works very well. So I talked about Industrial Light and Magic. They used it for Rogue One. And get this, 
normally takes about an hour to render on a high-end PC, just a given scene, right? Turned into something after Surratt had its way with it that a mobile GPU could render in 13 milliseconds. And I'm gonna include another link because I researched it a bit more. I still wanna read into it a bit more but didn't wanna miss it tonight. Check out the tech crunch article that I've got below. Click on the link there. You're going to see a video and in that video they give you some more details and some visuals so you can see some of those end results and they look pretty damn stunning. Absolutely. Now when I say I believe it's a form of compression or you know minimizing what's there that only makes sense. This is how they describe it. The tool was able to reduce the scene's texture size by a factor of 300. So again, they used actual industrial light magic renders, professional movie grade renders, and it converted those, the texture size by a factor of 300 and polygon count by a factor of 1,000. So while the um, author said that the mobile version didn't obviously look as polished as the full cinematic scene, it looked pretty damn good. Better than you could come up with on your own or what we've seen with game engines that are out there. So I'm going to read up more on that and probably talk about Surat a little bit more moving forward. Future videos uh, sounds like a hell of a good tool. So yeah, again, Fuzzball B, thanks for that link. All right, guys, that's it for the news on this Monday. Uh, like I said, the gaming video, hopefully within the next day or two. I don't need a desk for it, um, but I would love one. All right, guys, that's it for the news tonight. We'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers as always.